Hi, this is Scott Israel with First Vision, and today I'm giving a presentation on color cameras, specifically the differences between multi-sensor and single-sensor cameras. This presentation was originally created by Steve Kinney, Director of Technical Presales at JAI. Steve has an amazing amount of information, and today I'm going to do my best to try to present what he presented to us for training. You can get color from a camera in two ways. The first involves breaking up light into its component colors via a prism. In most cases, we can separate RGB and project the colors from the image onto three separate sensors. RGB video then comes out of the camera simultaneously. The second involves using a Bayes fi filter. This is a color filter that is placed over the sensor and each pixel has a red, green, or blue filter over it. Dr. Bayer of Eastman Kodak invented this method about 30 years ago. The output of this type of camera is a mono image, also known as a raw Bayer image. A color picture is created from this by using mathematics that takes a weighted value of a nearby pixel, combines them, and creates a single color pixel. Here's a picture of what I just described. For the Bayer camera, you can see that there's a mosaic here, and there's two greens for every blue and red. That's because the eye is more sensitive in the green spectrum. Each four pixels that has the two greens, a red, and a blue will get combined later on through some mathematics to produce a color image. So we can see here that you would take, let's say, these nine pixels weight them, and this pixel here gets replaced by the weighted average. It's not just really a weighted average, there's some complex mathematics. And you would output a red, green, and blue pixel based on that. A 3CCD camera has a prism block, and what it's going to do, you're going to image through the prism block. The prism will then break up the colors blue, green, and red, and correspondingly image it onto three separate sensors for that same pixel. Now, <clears throat> because on a Bayer camera you get color from the mathematics, the quality of the color from a Bayer camera is going to be dependent upon the algorithm used for the color. A red-green-blue camera outputs three pixels from a single point imaged. It's also known as a true color camera, as it makes up the colors from the uh, color spectrum. Quality of the color will be dependent upon how well the op optics, the prism block that is, separate the component colors. Note that in a Bayer camera, sometimes there's different types of algorithms being used. And therefore, the quality will also ver go versus the speed. Well, we're only on slide five, but we could draw some quick conclusions. If you need the best color quality or the best spatial resolution, you need a 3CCD camera. No questions. So then why wouldn't you always use a 3CCD camera? Basically, size and price. 3CCD cameras obviously have 3CCDs and a big prism block in there. So roughly, a 3CCD camera is about the cost of three monochrome cameras. The color prism block also adds to the size, as this is a fairly large piece of optics there. If you want to see the trade-offs for the rest of these uh, presentations, we're going to go through the pages here. So one of the more important things that you have to notice here is that sensor alignment is critical to the color quality that you're going to get. If the sensors are not aligned to within a small fraction of a pixel, then the light falling on each of the sensors may go to different parts of the pixel and it may not capture the light accurately. Jai has a patented process here where their alignment is to within a quarter pixel accuracy. If we look at the color filters in the cameras, you can see that a 3CCD camera has a hard dichroic prism coating, which gives you a very steep roll-off. 
The Bayer cameras use a soft polymer die, and they have much more overlap. So if we look at an example here, if we want to image green at 500 nanometers, we can see that on the 3 CCD camera that most of the green is about at 60% here, and there's really almost no blue. If we go down to the Bayer camera at 500 nanometers, you could see that we have roughly equal amounts of green and blue. Clearly, this is going to make it very difficult to get true color and very accurate color. An interesting feature that Jai has is that it not only can control the light via gain, but also via the shutter. If we look at a picture on the left here, and we see that there's uh, noise on the bottom, there's always noise in every picture, you're going to get noise through the sensor, you're going to get shot noise. Uh, there's different amounts of gain that are applied for the red, green, and blue to balance the red, green, and blue because the picture doesn't have equal amounts here. Notice that if we increase the gain, gain, only, gain always increases both signal and noise. So here we're going to increase the blue quite a bit, and you can see that the noise level comes up. If we were able to shutter balance the colors, in other words, we have a separate exposure for the red, green, and blue channel, so we can increase the, only the, the signal component and not the noise, we can improve our image by having greater signal to noise. Now, of course, to increase the amount of light coming through, you have to slow down the exposure time. And if you're looking at moving objects, this isn't going to work. But if you can have your exposure fast enough for your moving objects, or if you have fixed objects, this is a much better method of getting true color quality. This is what's known as the uh, color gamut, or a uh, linear color matrix. And it shows, uh, it tries to show a three-dimensional view. And what this is, is that not every device can see the same colors. So in other words, what you see on your monitor versus what you can print on your printer and what the camera can get are three separate uh, color spaces. This explains sometimes why if you want to buy a piece of clothing online, what you're seeing on your monitor and then when you open the box, that red is not exactly the same red that you saw when you were making your purchase online. The larger the triangle here, the more of the color gamut that you get. Uh, the smallest is the sRGB, and then there's the Adobe RGB, and then finally there's the Pro Photo RGB. Now, if you can make some color conversions, you can see what's going on here. Here's the original target up top, and here's a color camera that is not able to change its color matrix, so it does not have an sRGB. And you can see how washed out the colors are. On the bottom right is a Jai uh, 1 megapixel camera, the AT140. And here w they were able to convert to sRGB. And you can see it's a much closer representation of the original target. Here's another interesting picture. On the left side is a 2 megapixel Jai camera with three sensors. On the right is a 5 megapixel camera with a Bayer filter. You would think that the Bayer 5 megapixel camera has roughly 2 megapixels worth of red, green, and blue. Clearly it has more of uh, one than the other, but it's okay. On the 2 megapixel camera, though, you can see that the color quality is much, much higher. And that's basically because it's true color. It's not a mathematical re representation here. And this gets back to my original conclusion in slide 5. If you want dynamic, vibrant, accurate colors, you have to use three CCDs. Jai's multi-imager cameras provide better color fidelity equivalent to three to four times a single CCD Bayer filter. So in other words, a one megapixel camera is going to be uh, giving you better pictures than a 5 megapixel camera. It will also have lower noise, and if you can get uh, your picture gain up by using the shutter, 
you have a higher signal to noise ratio as well. GI currently offers its area scan cameras in 1024 by 768, 1390 by 1024, and 1600 by 1200 with uh, three CCD uh, sensors. That concludes this presentation. There'll be another presentation talking about color line scan cameras.